Olo YouTube, uh, it is I, Darth Cobain17. It's been a while since I've posted one of these types of videos. Um, recently, you've probably seen, if you do indeed watch my channel, um, me and my son James have been posting lots of gameplay video from the PS4 uh, for Rocket League and NHL 15, and then I've been doing my own for uh, Rad Rogers. Uh, so, yeah, we thought the, the system has the feature, and we didn't even think about it until recently, so we thought... For any games that might be interesting to watch, you know, um, uh, we may as well just throw them out there. There's, there's no, uh, no reason not to. So, um, so yeah, you'll see a lot of those videos. Um, but this is one of my regular ones, and uh, a few things I've got done recently. First one, um, I had no idea this book was even being written. Uh, Dragon Watch by Brendan Mull. Um, so when I found it on the on the shelf at Indigo, I was like, wow, because it's a continuation of um, his original series that he he wrote um he's got many now um a five book series i think it was called fable haven which um is still after all the things he's written it's still my favorite uh series of his probably because it was the first that's usually how it goes but um but uh but yeah so this one basically there's these two kids kendra and seth Sorensen, um young kids uh brother and sister who realize that their grandparents um uh, they have this big estate in the country, and uh, they find out that it's actually a sanctuary for, like, mystical creatures like centaurs and fairies and yada yada. But then, of course, there's also lots of evil creatures as well. So it's kind of a sanctuary. It's dangerous. There's trolls. There's whatever, you know. Um, so then they, they went on this great adventure and, and basically saved the world and stuff like that. Um, so this takes place a little while after the, the events uh, that wrap up the Fable Haven storyline. And... Uh, Life is fairly calm at the estate um, until uh, Kendra overhears something about um, from the fairy uh, when she visits the fairy realm with uh, with the fairy um, queen's son Bracken, who she's kind of romantically involved with. Um, she overhears from a uh, a witch or a demon there that um, that there's trouble brewing with the dragons, um, and then Seth in the meantime has gone to repay a debt to some some more suspect uh beings that he he enlisted the aid from in previous adventures and uh he also hears the same thing from them that there's trouble brewing with the dragons um and they actually um became allies with the dragons temporarily at the end of the fable haven series to kind of save the world um to put down a demon revolution uh, with the aid from the dragons, uh, but since then the dragons have gone back to their sanctuaries, and uh, but but there there is something brewing. So so when uh, caretaker of the worm roost dragon sanctuary Agad, who was himself self a former dragon but is now a wizard, comes to visit the Sorensons, he he confirms these rumors that there's uprisings uh, amongst the dragons at all the dragon sanctuaries around the world, and the dragon king Celebrant, who is actually at the worm roost. Um, uh, sanctuary is is testing the defenses of the sanctuary and trying to break free and um, and so they think he knows something that they don't and uh, so Agad has this plan that Kendra and Seth together with their different abilities with Kendra being fairy folk and uh, Seth being a shadow whisperer or whatever a shadow charmer um, that they would make good co-caretakers of of the Wormer's Sanctuary and be able to shore up its defenses and stuff like that. Um, so it's a very dangerous undertaking, but they decide to do it and uh, and they go and speak with Celebrant um, and he gladly accepts these two young children who thinks he's going to be able to walk all over and, and eventually um, break free of captivity, which is what the dragons want. They want to be free in the world and stuff, but uh, of course the humans and uh, are thinking the last time there was a dragon revolution it wasn't pretty for mankind so um so they want to prevent that from happening well at the same time being fair to them and giving them room to live and, and what they need so um so from there it's kind of this adventure for kendra and seth to figure out what celebrants up to how they can prevent him from breaking free and shore up the sanctuary's defenses and it leads them on this uh another big adventure for the Sorens and siblings <laughs> where they meet all sorts of new characters and, and, and perform all sorts of new amazing feats. Um, great book. And apparently it's going to be another five book series, just like Fable Haven was. So, um, I'm highly anticipating of course the second, third, fourth and fifth volumes, um, which will take of course in my mind forever to come out. But, uh, 
that is that. Um, the next thing is uh, w one of the games I kind of more recently got at Game Cycle um, is Twisted Metal for the PS3. When Twisted Metal 2 came out for the PS1, uh, it was back in the mid to late 90s, and my my friends and I that I live together with in university in our house, uh, at the second year it was, um, we lost a lot of class hours because of that game. <laughs> we would wake up in the morning and be like, well, who's going to class, or would we like to play Twisted Metal 2? And, and a lot of times we would not go to our morning classes and, instead of... Uh, in, in, to play Twisted Metal 2 instead so that was kind of bad but also kind of amazing at the same time um, a kid stay in school don't do that don't don't be like me um, but uh, this, this is an updated uh, kind of um, version for the PS3 which was out uh, a few years back um, actually more than that now um, but anyways the, the, the basics of the whole story is still the same this magical being named Calypso is holding this tournament where all these characters can enter with their vehicles which are all modded up to be able to destroy other vehicles and uh, they enter this tournament to try and win where the ultimate prize is they all get one wish granted by this Calypso character um, so you enter the tournament in, in an attempt to win and, and get your wish now the story mode follows three different characters um, which are unlocked sequentially so the first one is for Sweet Tooth who is you know the quintessential twisted metal character that's kind of what it all began with and you know where it continues to go all these years later um so his story is that you know he's this psychopathic clown murderer guy who used to be a family man um but got possessed by this sweet tooth whatever it is and uh he murdered his own family and he's committed tons of murders since but he's obsessed with the one who got away who was actually his daughter who put up a fight and then escaped into captivity or, or into hiding or whatever. Um, so he wants to win the tournament, find out from Calypso where she has been hiding all this time, and then finish what he started so many years ago. Um, after you've beat Sweet Tooth's story mode, you get to go to um, Mr. Grimm. Uh, his story is that he, as a kid, his dad was like a stuntman. And uh, uh, one stunt where he was jumping a motorcycle over a bunch of cars or something like that he it went wrong and he died and you know mr grimm saw his own father die right in front of him as just a young kid so he became traumatized uh led him to a life of crime and thuggery and so he wants to go back in time and prevent his dad from doing that stunt so that he lives and then his life turns out a lot more normal than it did um and then the third one is for dollface who is a former supermodel who was very ruthless um towards her competition and uh one day she gets in a car accident and has this tiny little scar but it's so hideous so she is like uh so she tried to get this surgery to or this weird doctor to have the scar fixed and stuff like that but he ended up putting this like china doll face on her which got stuck there and it's been there forever and and uh so she wants to get the mask off and her beauty restored so that she can get back on top of her modeling game so um but yeah, it's the same old Twisted Metal. It's it's classic, just mayhem, car-on-car -car violence. Um, gameplay is great. Graphics are great. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is that, again, with these new newer games, they're so like online, multiplayer-focused that I really wish... There's a two-player mode, but it's just like, go pick a level and play it, you know? I really wish you could have done like a co-op some sort of if not the full story mode some sort of sequential building towards a you know a goal story type of mode for two players that would have made the game a 10 instead of just a 9 right which is kind of where I pigeonholed it um but yeah that was that and then the third thing I did was uh this past Friday was a PD day for James at school and so I took it off with him and in a bad bit of parenting I took him to go see the predator um it's kind of a tradition as a young kid i for some reason somehow um ended up seeing movies i probably shouldn't have seen at that age um and it didn't do me any harm um and and and, and so i've kind of like kind of gone that route with my son as well um he he's mature enough for his age in certain respects anyways that he doesn't he hears bad language he doesn't repeat it um he he's not a you know, gore and stuff like that and fright doesn't seem to affect him it's you know um so he's kind of 
mature enough for his age to handle that sort of thing. Immature in other ways, but mature enough in that regard anyways. Um, so I took him to see it, and of course he loved it. But um, in this fourth installment of the Predator franchise, um, the movie kind of opens with two spaceships, uh, one chasing after the other in outer space. And then uh, one kind of opens a wormhole or something like that and escapes at the last second from the other ship. and But soon after, crash lands on Earth uh, somewhere in Mexico. Uh, and while that's going on, um, there's an army ranger sniper named Quinn McKenna who is in the middle of a, a hostage retrieval situation. And uh, this ship crash lands in the area where he's doing this. So everything goes all to hell. And then soon enough, he is encountering a predator. Um, and he manages, his all of his comrades die. But he manages to subdue it temporarily, and he makes off with a bunch of this alien's equipment, which he then has shipped to his estranged wife's uh, house back in the States, um, where his son Rory lives, who is uh, autistic, I believe. Um, so, while that's all happening, there's another, after Quinn escapes, a government agent named uh, Will Trigger, I think, something like that, um, shows up and has a team capture the subdued predator and uh, and take it back to a lab and in the meantime they find Quinn and, and bring him in for questioning because he's seen an alien so they have to of course not let him out in the public right so um, so they question him yada yada and eventually put him on a loony bin bus with a bunch of other ex-militaries who have had their own sorts of traumas and, and are are headed to uh, the military's version of you know the loony bin um, now, in the meantime, they've the, the government has the Predator in a lab, and they've brought in a specialist named Casey Brackett, um, Olivia Munn, who is dead sexy, by the way. I had no idea really who she was, but um, uh, so she comes in, and, and they're, they're, you know, she's amazed at that there's a real-life alien here, and so they're studying it and whatever, and in the meantime, Quinn is on a bus with these other guys, and they're being transported, and at that time, the other ship finally manages to track the predator to earth it enters earth's atmosphere and uh causes the other predator predator to wake up and kind of overcome the sedation they have it under and he just goes ape shit in the middle of the lab and, and turns it into a bloody mess um and escapes and uh from this facility and uh quinn and all these other guys on the bus witness the predator escape with casey running behind it with a stun gun wanting to subdue it again um and uh, so all hell breaks loose on the base. Um, they, uh, they, Quinn and all these guys uh, commandeer the bus and they end up rescuing Casey, who the government was actually going to eliminate after she's seen all this. Um, so then they kind of, Quinn steers this little motley crew towards his, uh, his wife's house because um, he figures the predator is going to be after his gear. Um, and so he's put his family and especially his son in danger, right? So... They get there, find out Rory's gone out trick-or-treating because it's Halloween and he's actually wearing the Predator mask as his costume. So they go out looking for him and then they just get embroiled in this fight where the other Predator shows up and and uh, and they're actually kind of saved when the two Predators come head-to-head -head and end up fighting each other. And uh, so they're all watching this go down and Casey's observing it and notices that the Predator that was chasing the other one is a lot bigger, uh, a little different. Um, so she kind of surmises through all of her studies uh, that it's actually the predators are trying to evolve themselves by using the best of the best from the DNA around the universe and um, and they're on Earth to gather mankind's best DNA. Um, so then after that, it's just kind of this, they're, they're kind of chase, uh, their, their flight, I guess, from the predator, but then they get caught by Trigger and his unit and brought in. To, to captivity for from them um so then in the end they kind of the trigger and his military guys quinn and his ragtag group kind of have to come together in a last ditch effort to 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 fight off this big improved predator and uh and prevent uh it from following through on its ultimate plan which uh they have since learned is is very dire for earth and mankind and and the future of of uh of life on on our planet as we know it so um the the movie was fantastic it was um i really liked the story um the whole dna thing 
uh, fit in really well with um, in, in going back to the previous movies and you know collecting skulls and ripping out spines and all that stuff. It really fits in well um, with the continuity I found, and it was also a really cool idea um, to steer this thing, you know, keep it going and keep it fresh and stuff. Um, the actors in the movie were great. Uh, the action was amazing, and of course the effects in, in the Predator monsters, they just looked amazing as they, as they always do. Um, so I'd heard a bunch of negative reviews before I went to watch it, and as usual, they're, it's, people just want to complain about stuff. Um, you know, instead of going out and creating their own thing that's better because they think they can, they don't. They just choose to rip other people's stuff apart. But uh, I, I see absolutely zero things wrong with that movie. Um, I think it's... Uh, is just continuing to build momentum for this this series and i hope in the end that the movie does well because I, w I really want them to keep making more more aliens more predator more aliens versus predator keep it coming because i'm gonna i'm gonna gobble it up like uh like tuesday taco night um yeah so that's it those are the three things that uh, i got up to recently but uh, i've got some more stuff in the works right now that uh, i'll probably be back with uh, in the next week or so probably and in the meantime there will be i'm sure many more gameplay videos being posted <laughs> so good day